you use AI to create GSAP animations for your project, then oh boy, do I have something for you today. Ready? Let's dive right in. So GSAP is one of the most powerful animation libraries out there. It is one of the most famous, if not the most famous. All we hear is GSAP, 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 and then Lenis, and then a problem with anchor links. But apart from that, GSAP can be really cool. It gives the users a very smooth experience when uh, going through your website. So as you can see here on their official website, there is this nice uh, intro animation. So if I refresh here, uh, you can see this nice intro animation. Uh, if you scroll, there are things animating as I scroll through. And um, this is using, of course, scroll trigger, but we'll get into that. You can see the, the logo as well uh, changes on hover, and um, that's pretty cool. And um, all in all, it's a very nice, smooth experience. Um, it doesn't cause a lot of lag. That's why it got really, really famous in the market or in the industry. So today we're going to have a look at how to use this uh, quickly and how to use this most efficiently and get the most out of it. And of course, we're going to use AI. So first, before doing that, let's see how we can install GSAP on our project. Now, in order to do that, of course, we're going to have to go to the gsap.com and then go to get GSAP. Pretty simple. You go to installation and then you scroll a bit down, you go to CDN and then here is uh, where you get the CDN version of GSAP which you can install on your, let's say, Webflow project. Uh, they have different plugins, as you can see, these are the free ones that you can use and then there's the club ones which are paid plugins that are available. Uh, for today, we're going to use the free plugins and uh, probably we're not gonna use any plugins for this video, but uh, one of the most common plugin to use is scroll trigger, text and observer, I think. These are common to use. However, these are all there to, uh, for you to test around. What's most important to install GSAP is basically this code right here. So you get this CDN code and then you go to your project, go to the page settings. Now, if you're doing this on one page, then you're gonna install it here before closing body tag and just paste it in here. However, if you're using this across different pages, then it's wise to put this on your site settings on the code that affects the whole website. Now that I have this code installed, I can go ahead and publish my site and that's basically it. If I go to my publish site, as you can see, Yars Dandy site, and I go to Wappalizer, I can see that GSAP is being used here. Of course, there's nothing animated yet, but um, it's already installed as a framework on my website. Now, the next step is, of course, creating the animations. Now, here is where it gets a little bit complicated because you're going to use code to do this. GSAP is still a coding library. It's still a JavaScript library that uses codes to work. So it might need a little bit of a learning curve to get to do that. However, lucky that we are, we are in 2025 and AI is more advanced than ever. So we're going to be using AI to create those GSAP animations. The great thing as well is that AIs like ChatGPT is already trained on GSAP so it can create for us some nice little smooth animations on the go. However, even with AI, it's always wise to go through GSAP, get to know it, get to see what's possible there, uh, what's not possible. I mean, of course, the AI can give you a solution to any problem that you have. However, sometimes the solutions get out of the way and might be a hindrance rather than a solution. So it's always to know what you're working with, what is available on GSAP. You can go and see the methods, the properties. Um, you can look at some examples as well if you can go to showcase and um, you can browse what other people has done because I think this is the best way to see what's possible in GSAP and what are the stuff that you can do with uh, this library. So this is there for you to check out. However, in today's video, we're going to use Mr. ChatGPT. Okay, so now that we're here, I think I have the free version for today. So what I want to do is a simple animation where hero squares uh, scales from zero to like midpoint and then 100%. So let's go to chat GPT and see how we can do that. So we'll, we'll say I want to create GSAP animation where hero square. So remember always to mention the class name. This helps get this inside the code so that you can easily animate the specific class name that you have. Now, in my case, because this project came from a template, so hero square has this um, in capital letter. However, in the back end, it's always in small letters with a hyphen. So hero square would be, you know, hero square like this. 
and the dot is to specify that this is a class. So here I'm telling ChatGPT I want to animate this class. I want to animate where here square. Let's see what ChatGPT will give us. So it's generating some answer. So it's giving me a from to animation, which is great. Uh, did not call the library, which it should. Um, we're not using any scroll triggers or any plugins. So that's okay. And again, and I know this because I've been using GSAP and I'm familiar with it. However, the fact that it did not give me a library can be something of a hindrance and uh, can uh, cause an issue that you might not be aware of so if we take this code and we go to the project we go to the end of so we already have the library so that's okay and we're going to paste this here now we are going to have to write script and uh, close the script tag and then we're going to save and then we're going to publish and we're going to see how this animation works out so we refresh we have this animation going it's very nice it's very smooth there was some hindrance there was some stuff that if you were not aware of let's say the script tag or the library or any other uh, points that you might get mixed up with them and have this experience a little bit slow and of course the experience is a little bit slow i mean i have to go to chatgpt.com i have to log in i have to prompt and then i have to copy the prompt i have to paste it here and i'm going to make sure that i have pasted it in the right place then i have to publish and then i have to check and of course when there are more animations more elements to be animated this code's going to get too long and it might be very hard to edit change or make any any adjustments so here is where the magic comes in we're going to be using something called cursor ai cursor ai is a great tool that is available in a free version and a paid version basically it's something like visual code studio if you're familiar with that so it's a coding platform so it's a coding program that has uh, ai embedded in it so first of all i'm going to open a new project and go to desktop and then we'll create youtube uh, tutorial and then we're going to open this project so this is an empty project uh, what we're going to do here is open our terminal and then we're going to install a package npm uh, init so this initiates a package file for us to set this up these are all okay and then this okay yes so now you can see it created this package.json file and uh, this is basically the package that i'm going to be working with and it's pulling from the main file which is index.js so let's create index.js and um, this is where we're going to be putting our code basically now this is going to be working on a live server so this is going to be working on our uh, computer we can't see this on other computers unless we of course publish the code but in our case we want to do this for development purposes and we want to be developing websites fast now this method is a local development method so that means it's only going to work on your local device uh, we're going to use a live server so that means if you want to publish this website and you want to view the animations or the codes that you did here somewhere else you're going to have to publish these codes whether on github uh, say the ngs deliver or just directly embed it or paste it on your webflow project however we're going to be doing this for development purposes and you're going to see how much faster this makes the process or the workflow so that you can develop gsap animations much faster let's get to it all right so what we need is first of all to get the extension live server so you're going to go to extensions and you're going to go to live server uh, you're going to get the live server now shout out to webbay who uh, showed me this method really really a uh, lifesaver so do check him out check out the courses that he does as well check out his gsap course which i learned so much from understanding what to do with gsap understanding different stuff that are possible with gsap some stuff that i wasn't aware of even though i've seen a lot of gsap tutorials he teaches new things stuff that you really need to learn to get better at gsap anyways do check them out we'll leave links in the description for now you just need to get the live server i have it already installed so i don't need to install it we can go back to the project i can close this and now um, we can um, go live so if you see here click on go live and starting it opens a port for me in this um in this directory so 5500 and i can see my index.js file so i can click on that uh, so far it's empty so i have nothing here but i need to copy this url right here so i'm gonna copy this url and then let's go back to my project 
and I'm gonna go to my page settings I'm gonna remove this one we're gonna not gonna need it um, actually we need the library so let's keep that we can open a script and then say this is type equal module and then the source is equal to the code that we just uh, copied and then we can and uh, that's basically it now this is calling our live server so we're gonna save and then we're gonna publish so let's see and if we publish here actually we haven't done nothing so we can't see so but we can see like let's say console log hello world uh, if we save that we go back to our project now we don't have to go back to webflow to publish every time because this is already using a live server so if you just go to the console log we refresh you can see that it's logging hello world so that means this is connected and it's working um, let's close this uh, I'm getting some bugs here and there but not a problem uh, this is not a bug fixing video this is gsap video so let's start creating animations now what is cool in cursor is that you have the chat here right here powered by different ai models you have a composer and you have a bug finder so we're going to start with the chat uh, actually my favorite one is the composer but we're going to start with the chat just to see how this is done so we're going to give it a similar prompt to what we gave here so i'm just going to copy this one uh, go back to cursor and i'm going to paste this in so let's see what it does for me now i'm using o3 mini here um, cloud is one of the favorites when it comes to doing this however o3 mini is pretty powerful as well so as you can see it already parsed in a code so this is the the gsap library which we already have so we don't need we just need this bit of code so i can click on apply here and you can see it pasted it in my index file and i can click save and uh, if i go back to my project all i need to do is just refresh and you can see it's setting this up now from here i can iterate on it so let's say I want more, say I want um, home hero, yes, I want home hero and let's try the composer for this one. So I'm going to click on composer and then here I want to happen after the hero square animation is done, it's fully done. Now Composer is faster because it directly composes the stuff, adds it between the lines. So let's say I have something between the two lines here, it just adds it. And then all I have to do is just review. You're going to see the highlighted stuff are the new stuff and then you can just accept them. And then if I go back to my project, again, all I have to do is just refresh on the main website and you can see it's having this animation. So first I have the hero square animating in and then I have the text animating in. I can go further and let's say uh, do the nav bar, so button nav bar and nav bar to come in from top and bottom. So I want to animate a nav bar to slide in from the top minus let's say minus 10 VH to 0 VH and bottom, what was it called? Uh, bottom nav bar so let's copy this again uh, remember if it has the capital letter you just have to add a hyphen and make it small letter so it will be like this and then and bottom nav bar to slide in from the bottom from let's say 25 vh to 0 vh this animation is to happen together with the home animation so now it's going to compose this for me and then I can accept it, go back to my project, refresh, and let's see. And now you can see the nav bars coming in from the top and bottom. Super, super smooth. If you guys are enjoying this type of content, subscribe to the channel, give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and get the word out there. And do comment to me if you want to see anything special, anything specific, and I would love to make a tutorial about it. See you guys in the next one.